God's holiness is the only source of true morality. His ways always will be higher than our ways. Today on Better Together, we're learning how to walk in obedience with Jackie Hill Perry, Lisa Harper, Nicole C., and Jada Edwards. Come on and join us. One of my uh, favorite Bible stories is Luke 4, uh, when Jesus was uh, in the wilderness tempted by the devil and how um, the devil comes with all of these like things like, hey, like go up on this like thing and jump. And it's like, why are you telling Jesus to kill himself? And then he says, hey, take the turn those stones into bread. And if you look at the Greek, he's actually saying loaves, like overindulge yourself, uh, utilize your power, your deity, your sonship to do what you always done, which is to turn, uh, to use regular means to do sap- supernatural things. Yeah. And it's just fascinating. But Jesus's response constantly was the word of scripture, Deuteronomy yeah. in particular. A okay. man shall not live by bread alone, but right. by every word that proceeds out of the mouth Mm -hmm. of God. But I think what we see in that passage is you see the first human being ever to consistently maintain his righteousness, Mm -hmm. to to never Mm -hmm. at any point Mm -hmm. give in to the whims and wishes of the evil one. And I think it's fascinating that Jesus, both God and man, shows us what moral purity actually looks like. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to have a conversation about that. Like, Mm. what does it look like for God to be holy in the way he lives his life? And how is it for us to, like, how do we even benefit Mm. from that? You know, that, I think a lot of that is Jesus spoke truth to a lie. Uh, And so if we know who we are in Mm -hmm. Christ, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think Jesus, I mean, that was him basically modeling spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And then he finally said, you know what? You get behind me. I'm not Mm going to look at you any longer. Mm -hmm. But he spoke truth to a lie. Yeah, Yeah. And I think that's where we need to get, find our foundation in who we are in Christ. And when we are tempted, when we do hear these voices, we have the truth of God's word of who he says we are, what we have in him, Mm -hmm. our identities found in him. Yeah. 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 I'm so glad too that Jesus didn't just throw positive sayings back at the devil. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And positive yeah, sayings, enough. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. like, like I mean, sorry, like, I mean, sorry, they, they have their place, but you know what I'm saying? But they, they don't have the I'm same power. Wait a minute, I need a little yeah. self-care you know before I'm I come saying? back and engage And you. I'm glad he didn't just start throwing <laughs> insults because from some of our faith cultures, we've heard, you know, slew foot and just, right. you know, you, you think if you just right. call them names, that's going right. to be enough to mm-hmm. to get you through that. But he used the word. He did use the, mm-hmm. it is written. Yeah. Back to Deuteronomy mm-hmm. in different places. Is it, yeah. you know, quote unquote, was already, you know, a part of what he had originally said. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's super um, powerful that Jesus, God, God in man, mm-hmm. could have given new revelation, mm-hmm. could have declared yeah. new truth, yep, could have done something else to display his power other than what was being requested, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. to say, I'm not doing what you said, but I am Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm about to show you. And yeah. for I him think we to, would like to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and to Jackie's point, for him to do what I could do, mm-hmm. I can do wow. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I can call on scripture that yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. In the face of it. Right. That, that that passage for me is Matthew 4. I like his version a little better, but mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the same heart. I That is fascinating. And sometimes yeah. it leaves me speechless and more importantly, without excuse. Since we're talking about, you know, God being perfectly holy, Mm -hmm. but we're called to holiness, even though some days we're a perfect mess, is I love that you've got the temptation immediately after Jesus was baptized and God sent the dove and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And when they put scripture into this readable form and translated that Greek and Aramaic to English, they segregated that mm. and put it in chapters, but it's not segregated in the original right. uh, original Greek. He goes immediately yeah, to the from God's right. delight to difficulty. Mm-hmm. And I think we mm-hmm. tend to think, or I'll just say I, mm-hmm. I'm the chief mm-hmm. of all sinner, sinners like Paul. Oh, I'm not as smart as Paul. Mm-hmm. I'm more like the chief of all sinners like Peter because he's, he's my favorite because <laughs> he's always stepping in it. But we tend to think that being delighted in and suffering, fellowship of suffering or difficulty are segregate. And you go, Jesus mm-hmm. just showed us mm-hmm. you can have the delight of God and very difficult circumstances. And that can be synergistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just like, even yeah, go along with that. 
Psalm 23, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows. Yes. Following mm-hmm. right behind it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes yeah. the right path will lead you to the wilderness. That's right. Doesn't, That's right. Yeah. It says the Holy Spirit took him immediately Holy into Spirit. the wilderness. Yeah. yeah. When we consider Jesus' obedience uh, yeah. for 33 years, yeah. it's that he perfectly obeyed the moral law of right. God as right. legislated uh, to Israel in Exodus 19 and 20, right? right? But when we as Christians teach that law, Right. then it, it's confused often as legalism right. or graceless to say mm-hmm. that we should live righteously. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. so how do we also balance, I think we talked about this earlier, but I want to draw yeah. it out some. Mm-hmm. How do we yeah. balance that tension of, no, yes, grace is a thing, but there is a law that God has called us right. all right. to obey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's that grace that helps us to obey that law. It helps yes. us Good. obey. And, but and he did break the law a little bit because remember, he healed on the Sabbath. He did he stuff did that he shouldn't have do. Mm-hmm. He, broke, was he broke ceremonial yeah. law. Yeah. He broke ceremonial but going law. going back to, yeah. to Exodus 19 and 20, that he's, uh, my mind can't wrap around that he's transcendently unique, perfectly holy, but he's also perfectly loving. Yeah. And so the law was never punitive. The law was always for our protection and our provision. So you look at, even as he explained the law at the end of Exodus 20, he goes, This is for your good. Mm -hmm. This is because I want to be in relationship with you. This is, we see it as, we see it again as as a way where God is a killjoy and we've got to do have this whole checklist in order to please him. It's like, that's not even the reason he gave it. That's not the context he gave it. Mm -hmm. He gave it to go, this is for your good. You were formerly slaves Mm -hmm. and you worked your behinds off Mm -hmm. for seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. And you were under the assumption in Egypt that the sun God was raw and he beat down on you mercilessly. Mm-hmm. And and then you died at about 31 or 32. Wow. And so I'm going to reframe your identity with creation. We forget he gave him the creation story after they came out of Egypt. Teach mm-hmm. us, please. We, yeah. Well, you know, we tend yeah. to look at that chronologically. Yeah. And it's like, no, they didn't have the word mm-hmm. when they're in Egypt. So he goes, let me reframe the story. I created the sun mm-hmm. for your good, right. to warm your body. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to understand it now because you still have a slave mentality. Mm -hmm. But as I give you a new identity, I'm giving you Sabbath, Shabbat, not so you can't mow the lawn or wear, you know, a bathing suit on Sunday or T-shirt over it. I'm giving you Shabbat because you're not a slave. Mm -hmm. You're my children. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to work yourself to death. I was trying to explain the difference between law and and love and how they're synergistic when God does it to Missy. Yeah. And I said, she's 12 now. And I said, honey, because she had said something and she said, or I'll get in trouble. And I said, well, but God didn't set those parameters so you'll get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I said, you know how when we go bowling, bumpers come up. Mm -hmm. And when the bumpers come up, your ball won't go in the gutter. And she was like, yes, ma'am. And I need them too. I'm a terrible bowler. I said, that's what the imperatives or what we would call the commandments in scripture are. It's God's divine bumpers. So we won't bowl gutter balls or so our, ha- our hearts will get oh, crushed girl. in the gutter. It, they're, they're for our good. <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. all that, but all that goes back to belief. Yeah. Yeah. When we go, he's a holy God, do you go, he's a holy loving, Mm. good God. We tend to think, or I tend to think, used to think growing up, holy meant aloof, angry, dispassionate. Mm -hmm. And it's like to get holy and loving, Mm. man, that's the jam. And to to know that, that question of the grace and righteousness, that tension, to know that grace is this, this, undefinable gift that, that right. God continues to bestow on me, number one, to give me access to even believe in Jesus. Yeah. And then it's the it's the thing that says when you sin, mm-hmm. the consequence eternally that that sin should bring, my grace keeps you from that. That's right. My grace doesn't say That's right. don't try to, the, the grace is not saying don't live righteously. That's it's right. saying yeah. when you don't live righteously, yes. the consequence you should have got, you're not going to get anymore. And, yeah. so, and there's a possibility that if you are of the sort that wants to take advantage of that grace, you, you, can, you right. may not actually be living in it. That mm-hmm. That's exactly. exactly right. Paul said, do we sin more so grace yeah. could abound, not, right? Yeah, no. May that ever, right. And, and actually yeah. implies uh, throughout a few of his letters that, if you continue in this lifestyle, you don't know. then we might need to check if That's you right. really had the grace right. to begin with, yeah. right? Because I don't know about y'all, but I've been in the, 
Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I've had some good worship moments mm -hmm. that wasn't in a church and no music was playing. I'm talking about in the midst of foolishness. Yeah. yeah. And God is like, I'm not going to expose you. That's right. Mm -hmm. But do you do you see what you're doing? That's, That's right. grace to me. Yeah. Yeah. When it I'm is, like, yeah. ooh, it oh, is. Lord. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah. just yeah. get up, yeah. wash your face and, mm -hmm. and get your Piper. life together. And yeah. so I think there there has to be a burden mm -hmm. for this righteousness. Yeah. I cannot discount that moral Purity is an impossibility because yeah. Jesus showed me that it is. Mm -hmm. um, I have to absorb truth. I have to saturate myself in truth right. and and know that this is God's divine instruction right. for me. That's and right. grace, I mean, it's wrapped up in the thing. I mean, I, it, it is. is. And it's, it it's is. present and it's ongoing and it's it lavish and it's abundant and it's all these yeah. things. But it's not an excuse, right? Yeah. It's not a pass to yeah. not then pursue righteousness. It actually is it's the vehicle by which you can That's pursue. Right. right? And so say. he was like, without grace, y'all, it didn't go so you well. Can. So um, you, you have to have it so that you can be, so you can pursue righteousness. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. John Piper, um, I think, said it so concisely. He said, grace is not leniency when we sin. It's the power not to sin. That's right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I grew up, the first time I really tasted grace, I was, it was right out of, after college. I moved to Nashville and had this pastor who preached grace, a fabulous preacher. But I was so grace deficient mm. that when I first got a hold of grace, I just thought, mm. oh. but then I got in the wrong ditch because mm -hmm. I thought, well, I mean, that's covered by grace. That's covered by grace. Mm -hmm. And and it took me a while because in my spiritual maturity, I saw it as leniency mm -hmm. instead of power. Mm -hmm. And now I go, boy, it's not God accommodating human foolishness right mm -hmm. it's okay. god he we are the created yeah he knows that we're just mm -hmm. dust it's him it's it's both and mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. i'm going to forgive you here i have unmerited favor but i also have favor to make you walk right mm -hmm. here's the way that i want you to walk for your good and my glory yeah yeah okay. i think one thing that's helpful too is even going backwards which is um I think we live in a society and always have where people attempt to live holy without the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so I think we also yes, have to establish that. the fact <laughs> that conversion and regeneration needs to happen yeah. right. before you are actually able to live righteously. That's right. That's right. It's, it's that I was born in sin, shaped mm -hmm. in iniquity. That's my right. heart is hard. My eyes are blind. Right. I don't see nothing right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And God has that to do a so work right. where yes. he has to regenerate yep. me, convert me, make yes. me a new creature then empower me yeah. to live righteously. Yeah. Yeah. To do it the other way right. around. So that's right. right. That's what good what I love about Jackie is, is she makes it so clear, yes. so clear. that you cannot survive yeah. life without God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was at a, a church for a long time uh, where they didn't tell us that yeah it was yeah. it was all legalism yeah. it's yeah. you know you old, like you you talk on the phone for five minutes and you don't give the gospel you're in sin right you hug right. somebody you're in sin mm -hmm. you, right. you don't witness the strangers you're in sin and so right. i lived in this culture yeah. where i'm always feeling yeah. like i have yeah. to be this perfect person and they never said to me God has already made you new. Yeah. Right. God has already yeah. done the work. Yeah. He's already filled mm -hmm. you Not with spirit. Yeah. Just live yeah. as you are, which you is Ephesians. Yeah. Just live yeah. out your spiritual yeah. condition yeah. in Christ Jesus. Right. And yeah. that ultimately your favorite verse to him who was able <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> to keep you from stumbling. Yeah. You know, right. so I think mm -hmm. conversion is something that we need to talk about more. What is actually yeah. happening yeah. and how that's a yeah. part of our ability to live like Jesus. Yeah. Yes. And it, it creates such a deep frustration for people. I've I've had a few conversations. Uh, my husband and I have the privilege of leading a church in the North Texas area, and um, there's been a few times, more times recently, and over the over the, maybe the past five years, well, I've been talking to people. They want to talk meet. They, they're experiencing some frustration. Something's going on in their relationship with God, um, or I actually had somebody specifically tell me. I feel like I'm not connected in the worship experience. Mm. And we were just talking and every time, I cannot tell you how many times I'm sitting there praying like, God, what's going on? Yeah. And he's like, they're not a believer. I'm like, mm. what? What? I mean, he's like, Jada, worship's for the believer or this person, what they're talking yeah. about. And I actually talked to a young woman I'll never forget. And I said, tell me, you cannot ask people, are you a Christian? Right. You can't say, no, are you saved? No, no. Everybody, you know, I asked her, especially. tell me the last time you heard the voice of God tell you to do something that you know you didn't want to do. Mm. Wow. Yeah. 
Mm. Well, I know I should. I said, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I want to know when internally wow. right. mm. you felt a conviction. Right. right. And she could not tell me. She could tell me times that she tried to act right. Dad was a pastor. That's a good mm-hmm. grandfather was a good pastor. I have to tell, even when I disciple yeah. women, like, this is how you find, this is how right. you find. Mm-hmm. Tell right. me when you've heard the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. say something, tell you to apologize, give, mm-hmm. that you know you, that you would not right. have done on your yeah. own. And she could not tell me a time. Tell me, tell me when you came to know the Lord. Well, I was at youth camp. Y'all, she's giving me all this stuff. And I was like, mm-hmm. experience and, it. Oh my gosh, it broke my heart mm-hmm. because then the Lord was like, you need to present the gospel to her. I was like, right. She, she fifth generation pastor's child. <laughs> she should know about me. Right. Right. Yeah. right. He was like, she don't know me. Mm-hmm. She knows yeah. about, about me, but yeah. not me. Yeah. Huge difference. So I it's just said, huge. and I had to try to find a way to frame it. I said, could it be mm-hmm. that you've maybe not had a defining moment of surrender? Mm-hmm. Have you had That's that good. moment? That's and she, good. Yeah. Good. And she was like, good. I mean, I know I'm saved. And I was like, but how? How do yeah. you know? And we had a long conversation. It wasn't until a week later she came back and she said, you know what happened to me this week? What happened? I was in the bathroom <laughs> coming out of the shower and I just broke down crying. Oh. And I don't know what happened. No. <laughs> mm. I, was like, I think you got saved. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. It was real just real. That, really for real. And yeah. Now, over these past three years, watching that growth, yeah. that hunger for righteousness, yeah. not now rightness. Now can grow. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the it. same. That's yeah. it. Hunger for righteousness, yeah. not that's rightness, it. not just do the right thing, yeah. but that's something it. in me actually wants to do the yeah. right thing. It's still mm-hmm. something that wants to do the foolish yeah. thing, too, mm-hmm. but at least yeah. there's a battle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah. that, that, battle. that conversion <laughs> <Yeah>. thing <laughs> is overlooked. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I think yeah. the, the pandemic exposed the church, mm-hmm. that we had sure attendance mm-hmm. and gathering and people who were churched and not, not true disciples. They yeah. were not, not they were not right. believers. And then they yeah. then they didn't know how to navigate this time mm-hmm. where right. they weren't coming in every week right. because they didn't have any any guiding spirit, any hunger for the word of God. It, that conversion thing, I think, has been one of the most overlooked things in this grace based way that we do church right, right now. Yeah. We're just right. assuming that everybody. Has, knows the gospel, has accepted it, and now we're starting from the same time, right. and we're not. Yeah. We are I read not. A, a history journal article recently that was talking about how the greatest change, if you not taking Jesus out of the picture, obviously that's the greatest change historically, Christian, non-Christian, but he said other than the incarnation, the greatest change in humanity was the printing press mm-hmm. because it opened it up, us up to all this information. Mm-hmm. And the article concluded that we have more information, very easily accessible, Mm -hmm. about God than ever in the history of humanity. Mm -hmm. And we have less intimacy with God Mm -hmm. as a result. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a whole lot of people who are podcast, have podcast fatigue, Mm -hmm. but they haven't been alone Mm -hmm. with God and His Word in a long time because the the holiness of God, Mm -hmm. if you sit... In the presence of God Himself through the work and person of the Holy Spirit, and you will want to move toward Him mm-hmm. in a response that's holy. Mm-hmm. I think we've got a whole lot of people who have a whole lot of information mm-hmm. yeah, about right God, now, right. so they can use the terms, yeah, use right. the semantics, but they've never had that so experience moment, yeah. of going, I can't make it by myself. Mm-hmm. Which is the trajectory of, okay, I was evangelized to convert it. Now right. there's discipleship. That's right. Yeah. Needed. Oh. There, there's a, there's a need for community yes. and help and guidance on how right. to live yeah. righteously. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I used to yeah. tell my kids all the time, like, I'm really not interested in you being good kids. Yeah. I want you to be godly kids. Yeah. Right. Well, mm-hmm. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. Right. And one has a relationship rooted in Christ. The other's just doing yeah. a lot of deeds. Yes, no, yeah. do's, don'ts. I, I pray for my yeah. kids' salvation every day. Yeah. yeah. Like Jesus, what's the earliest age? Yeah. yeah. You haven't mm-hmm. told us, but this mm-hmm. one right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need right, right now. You, you could just, now. You could just right go ahead and dwell this one right <laughs> here. I just, the bath is full of the Holy I Ghost. I need to know she goes. Goes. <laughs> you know? Speaking of goodness. <laughs> yeah. How do we define it? Mm. Because the rich young ruler comes to Jesus mm. and says, hey, good teacher. Mm. Jesus says, why do you call me good? Mm-hmm. Only God is good. Yeah. And most of the conversations culturally are technically around goodness, mm-hmm. ethics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is a good thing for me to be myself. Mm-hmm. Right. It is a good thing for mm-hmm. me to transition. That's right. It is a good thing for me to vote for this person. Right. It, like all of our conversations and arguments right. are about mm-hmm. goodness. Mm-hmm. And so like where do we look to when it comes to the nature of God and in his word to actually define what is good because that's a holy conversation Mm -hmm. that's right well jesus answers the question by saying only Only god God is good good. Mm -hmm. 
uh, or if we even go back to the garden, when God made the heavens mm -hmm. and the earth, made Adam and Eve and all the things, he looked and said that it was good, good right. meaning he judged it good because he had the authority to define goodness right. on his own terms. Mm -hmm. right. And so I think the way we base goodness is by looking to God, mm -hmm. right. wisdom, perfection, lovely, the spirit. So kindness is good. Gentleness is good. Mm -hmm. Self-control is good. Forbearance is good. That is good. We cannot let TikTok mm -hmm. and the culture right. yeah. and our feelings yeah, or our, right. even our circumstances mm -hmm. define right. goodness. Because yeah. if we define goodness on things that are not rooted in the Bible, then our definition of goodness is mutable. Mm -hmm. Right. It's always right. changing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And therefore the our hope is very yeah. inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Right. Our like <laughs> well, suffering ain't good. Who said that? Yeah. Right. Right. Not the Bible. Not the Bible. <laughs> Feel good didn't mean it ain't good. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, if something is happening in my life that is hard, but it's pushing me towards Jesus, I can't say it's bad. Mm -hmm. I must say it's good. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I know God better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a good yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think our definition mm -hmm. of goodness really does matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that that idea of goodness, um, Jackie, I think is very powerful that only God is good. Yeah. And then guess what we got in Acts? We got God not with us, but in us. Mm -hmm. And so Come now on. you have the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. And there's so much freedom in Galatians that if you walk in the spirit mm -hmm. like that's the only imperative in that passage yeah. mm -hmm. he's not saying don't carry out the flesh don't mm -hmm. be immoral don't do this mm -hmm. he's not even saying be loving be joyful right. be good he's only saying walk right if you walk in the spirit Hike. that's right you can't walk in two that's directions right. <laughs> and if you walk right. in the spirit the evidence yeah. is the fruit that that's he right. bears that's right. and it's one fruit it's yeah. not yeah. apples and peaches that's and grapes. Right. Right. It's an yeah. apple that's, that's round right. and red and crisp and juicy. Yeah. It's yeah. one it's thing that Ooh, this right. is how yeah. we know we're walking that's in the right. spirit. Yeah. So I feel free that I don't have to try to be joyful. That's right. I'm really yeah. having a stank day. Right. If yeah. I would just right. yield to the spirit, right. he's going to tell me what to do, what to say. And that's where the righteousness comes in, right? Because now I'm not trying to conjure up goodness. Mm -hmm. Right. If God, who says, love me, love your neighbor, when you listen to me, you will see yeah. joy and self-control and kindness. Yes. Right. I don't have to try to manifest those things. If only God is good, why am I trying? Mm -hmm. Why am I not walking? Mm -hmm. Why am I not right. yielding? Mm -hmm. Right. It's the really effort yeah. apart from God yeah. that gets you in trouble. That's yeah. right. When it's really the yieldedness, yeah. which is only the, the only way you're going to bear fruit. And so I think that's a powerful reminder that only God is good. Mm -hmm. So I must yield to God in yeah. order right. yeah. to exhibit goodness in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And anything I'm calling good must be affirmed by God. Yeah. Yeah. Must right. be loving him and must be loving my neighbor. Yeah. And right. if it's not doing one of those, then it can't be good. That's yeah. right. And we are his workmanship. Absolutely. Created in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. yeah. for Good, good, good yeah. works, right. good you know, works. and so that's our identity. Mm. That's our call. Mm. That's right. uh, and it's through the power of the Holy Ghost that we are able to do good things at all. But I might add, <laughs> I must add that the beauty is that at the end of the day, even all the good things that we've done, they won't be in vain. Yeah. Mm. Like we'll stand before the mm. good God mm. and be rewarded. Yeah. Wow. Right. And then we like, but thanks. But glory be to God yeah. for you because right. right. everything right. I did came out of you. Yeah. And so, man, this whole thing is just good. good. <laughs> and all about him. Yeah. It so let's is. pray. Yeah. Lord, we thank um, you. Uh, yeah. We thank you for your goodness. Bless you, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for uh, your providence in making us children of God. Uh, we pray for everyone, for us, for everyone watching, uh, that you would continue to form us into your image, that you would give us a community of people that love you, that love your scriptures, that you would give us a conviction and a zeal for righteousness, yeah. true, authentic, biblical righteousness, and that we would bear uh, good fruit and do yeah. good things. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen. 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 I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.